Hey teacher bestie, welcome back to another episode. This week I thought I would do something a little bit different. You see, every Wednesday at 5 or 5.30 Mountain Time, I go live on Instagram to answer your questions in regards to teaching or being a first year teacher. And last week's episode I thought was really good, so I want to share it here with you this week. Last week I talked about tips for parent-teacher conferences and also other tips in regards to leaving work on time and other things that you ask. So I'm so excited for this episode, so stay tuned because this one's going to be great. Hey, teacher bestie. My name's Helena, and I'm the creator of the Present Teacher Podcast. I'm a first-year teacher coach, and in this podcast, you are going to learn everything from simple, actual classroom management, social emotional learning, and teacher wellness strategies. You know that impact you want to make in the classroom? Well, we're going to make it happen here. We made it. We are halfway through the week and we are through January because let's be honest, January was a very, very, very long month. Or is it just me? I felt like January was very long. Um, For those of you that are new and just joining me, hi, welcome. My name is Helena. I'm the creator of The Present Teacher and I help first year teachers and new teachers um, thrive inside and out of the classroom through classroom management, social emotional learning, and teacher wellness. And I really love hanging out on Wednesdays and I go live every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time to answer your questions. So if you are joining me live, feel free to put where you are joining from in the comments. And then a common question I've been asking lately, are you team Dunkin' Donuts or team Starbucks? I am team Starbucks. Not gonna lie. I get it almost every morning. Anyways, my dog decided to say hi. Hi, Kine. So anyways, if you have a question for me, there should be a little Q&A box question down below. You can enter it there or enter in the comments and feel free to hang out and just answer questions. And honestly, Wednesdays are my favorite days because I get to get on here with you guys. So um, I am wearing my Real Madrid outfit. I promise I don't always wear this. I am a full-time teacher, second grade teacher. Today was spirit day and it was jersey day. So that's why I'm here with that. Anyways, I got some questions in my DMs that I wrote down, and I'm going to start with those ones first, and then again, if you have a question that you want to ask, feel free to drop them in the comments, and I'm happy to talk about that as well. So the first question I got was, I feel guilty for not taking work home. When will that end? Yes. So let's talk about this because this is a hot topic. I was just like you. I felt guilty for taking or for not taking work home. I felt like in order to be a good teacher, I had to live, breathe, and just be everything teaching. But what I what happened when I would do that is I found that I was just kind of my energy levels were lower and my ability to show up as the amazing teacher I knew I could be just started to kind of fade away. So should you feel guilty for taking or for not taking work home? My answer is no. In fact, I'm going to let you in on a secret that you may not believe, you may not want to hear, and may not be very common, but you do not have to take work home to be a good teacher. I know I said what I said, but it's true. You don't have to take work home in order to be a good teacher. There are ways to create systems in the classroom during your day so that you can thrive, so that you can be productive, and you don't have to take work home. If you don't believe me, look at my life. I like to pop on and check in with you guys on my stories right after as I'm leaving, and I don't leave, or I leave on contract time. I leave at 3.30, 3.15 contract time. There are occasions where I will stay till four, but they're very rare. So I'm proof, and no, I don't come in hours, hours early and either. Um, So yes, it is possible and you should not feel guilty for taking your not taking work home. A second point I want to add is if you are really struggling with this concept, I want you to do two things. So first thing, when you take work home, I want you to take five minutes after you got done working at home and take some time to reflect in your journal how that made you feel. Do you feel energetic, excited? Do you feel drained and exhausted? Take some time to reflect on that. And then I want you to reflect on how you feel the next day. If you notice a correlation between always bringing work home and how you show up, maybe it's time to start asking yourself, 
Is bringing work home really helping me be the best teacher I can be? Or is it helping me get stuff done that maybe seem important now, but in a year from now, I'm not going to remember? So a good way to focus on this is to focus on your priorities and kind of take a look at what are you prioritizing on your to-do list? Because I promise you, if I was trying to get every single thing done today, right now, I would have to stay until midnight. But the trick is, and I've learned through years and years of experience and the hard way, is you need to start looking at your to-do list. Start looking at what you are prioritizing and ask yourself, is this really important? Is this really where I want to dedicate my energy? Or maybe is there something else I would like to dedicate it to? So do not feel guilty for not taking work home. It is completely fine. In fact, a good thing that you don't take work home. So that was my first question. The second question I got was, oh, I took nine days off so far. Is that a bad thing? Is it bad to take your personal days off? So if you are joining me in the live, I would love to hear your comments. And even if you are in the replay, watching the replay, go ahead and put in the comments. I'm curious. Do you think it's bad to take your personal days? I know my opinion, but I want to hear yours. Going with mine, mine personally, I didn't take personal days my first, second, or third year. However, my fifth, sixth, fourth year, I am absolutely taking personal days. In fact, I'm taking about one a month because what happened was I accumulated days from my first two years that I never used or like last year, I didn't use a whole lot. I used like three or four. So I have nine days I carried over. This year, I'm taking one a month because I know and I've taken the time to reflect when I push through the entire year without giving myself a break, yes, I know as teachers we get a break, but a personal day to get stuff done or just relax and do the stuff that I feel like I need to do. When I do that, that week that I show up, I am full of energy. I am passionate. I am excited about what I'm doing. I'm excited to be there for those kids. But when you push me until the end of the year without a single break, I am counting the days until summer. I am just counting the minutes till the days end. And I realize that's not the kind of teacher I want to be. So absolutely highly recommend schedule your personal days. I highly recommend it. And what I like to do, and if you finish or follow Brittany Blackwell from Teaching Mind, Body, and Soul, she talks about this too. And she's awesome. First off, quick shout out, go follow her. She was on the podcast. But she says, schedule out three to four personal days in a school year, you're going to thank yourself. So here, if I was a new teacher and I was starting out the new year and I hadn't taught before, these are the days that I typically recommend scheduling time off. So the first one, October. October is one of those, like the longest months ever. A second definitely want to is February. February is parent-teacher conferences, grades are due, And everyone starts getting sick again because we just got back from break and we're all cooped up. So definitely those two months. And then April. April is a good time right after break or spring break for me anyways to take a day off. So highly recommend you take two to three scheduled professional or personal days throughout your year. Do not feel guilty for using your days. They are there for that reason. And if you think about it, if you are ever switching districts, they don't really carry over, at least where I'm at, they don't. So might as well use them. So that's what I recommend doing. Don't feel bad. Your first year, you're going to get sick all the time anyways. I know I did. So don't feel guilty. I kind of wish I took more days off, honestly, my first couple of years, but I didn't. So don't learn. Don't do what I did. Learn from me. The third thing I wanted to talk about is I got some questions and saw some questions about parent-teacher conferences. So for me, parent-teacher conferences are on Friday. Yay! And the first year or two, I'm going to be honest, almost three years that I did parent-teacher conferences, I would literally shake when I talked to the adults. Like, I would make sure to wear a skirt, and I would shake, like, my legs would literally shake, and I would do, all like, everything in my mind to just keep still and hope they didn't notice. That's how scared I was. And hope, maybe you can relate to this, but talking with kids is different. You kind of get used to that, but when it's an adult, it's a completely different thing. So a couple years of 
really not knowing how to do that and kind of scared, I finally started to figure out a rhythm that actually made me enjoy parent-teacher conferences. I actually look forward to them. So don't get me wrong, you might have those families that need a little extra love and might make things a little more challenging. But that aside, I look forward to them and here's why. The first reason is I was looking at parent-teacher conferences the completely wrong way. I would look at parent-teacher conferences like waiting for my parents or families to explode on me, to just kind of like spew all their anger and whatnot, because I had seen so many, you know, horror stories about it. And it wasn't until like my first or second or third time that I started to realize, you know what, it's not actually that bad. And instead, I kind of switched my mindset and said, you know what, parent-teacher conferences are the day I get to sit one-on-one with these families and I get to brag my heart out about this kid. I get to brag about how much growth they've made, how they started here at the end of the year and how in just six months, four months, we've gone from here to here and just imagine the growth they're gonna make in the upcoming months. So while yes, it's easy to go into parent-teacher conferences with the mindset of you know, worrying and kind of not sure what's gonna happen, First tip is go into it in a celebrating way because you may not know this, but your parents and families are actually kind of nervous too. They maybe aren't sure what you have to say. They're hoping their child has been, been behaving. And so when you come in kind of feeling standoffish and not really proactive in the positivity, they're going to feel that energy. So instead, start your day or start your conference right off the bat with some positivity. I like to start off with three strengths. I like to point out, I take some time the night before, the day before. I like to write down three strengths from that student that I adore or that I love about them or things I learned about them. So I do three positives. And that's the first thing I talk about to my families. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited that you are here to celebrate so-and-so's learning. Here are three things I love about, you know, Lydia. I didn't want to say Johnny. They always say Johnny. Poor Johnny's. Anyways, um, starting off with his positives is going to make your families more excited to be there and more open and make it, they'll feel more welcomed and you're going to make them feel like you are more open to the positivity and you see the positivity in them. After I follow those three, three strengths, I focus on one, not weakness, one thing we can work on as a team. So instead of saying, you know, I don't want to say Johnny again, uh, Damien, really needs to turn as, you know, as bad at turning in his homework, I'm going to say one thing we can all work on is making sure, you know, Damien turns in his homework. And that's a great way to make your families feel like they're a part of a team. And it makes them feel like we're all working together and we're all wanting great things for your student. So I always do three positives. One thing we can all work on. And then one tip that I learned maybe my second year is one of the reasons I wasn't sure about parent-teacher conferences was because I secretly didn't know what to do if a parent got upset with me. I don't know if I'm the only one. I could be the only one feeling this way, but I was so terrified that they would freak out and I wouldn't know what to do and I would just kind of stand there because I did work prior at Subway And we did have, I was a supervisor, but it wasn't really the same kind of thing. So I actually researched, you can see the Hermione side of me. I actually researched ways to de-escalate families. And I found this great video. If you follow me, follow me on Instagram. I will post it in my stories. I don't remember what it's called. It's going to take some research. But it walked you through step-by-step step how to de-escalate a family. So one, they felt validated, and two, they were on your side after. Because what you don't want to do or you don't want to happen and what I was worried was going to happen, these parents or families would explode and then they would go to the principal and explode again. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to be able to 
help my families in the moment. So here's the formula. And I swear, you guys, I said this nonstop for an hour right before parent teacher conferences one time. Like Kyle started repeating it. He got kind of tired of it. Anyways, I'm going to share the formula. And if you have time, go watch the video, check out my stories. I'll post it there. But the first thing you want to do is say thank you. I know that's not what you're thinking, but you want to thank your family for bringing up this this problem or this situation. And I like to say thank you because you got to think these family members have been letting all this emotion build on this one thing they've been focusing on to tell you typically. So you want to diffuse that and kind of set them back and validate their feelings. So for example, let's say something happened, I don't know, at recess. You can say, thank you, because the last thing I would want to do is have someone feel uncomfortable or not welcomed or like they weren't, didn't have a friend or someone wasn't being friendly on the playground. So thank you because that's the first two steps. Thank you because. And then the next part is I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, and here's the thing that it took me a little bit to learn. When you say I'm sorry, you're not saying I'm sorry that you're wrong, they're right. You're saying you're sorry that this happened to them and the stress it's causing them. So thank you because, thank you for bringing this to my attention because the last thing I would wanna do is to have someone feel uncomfortable on the playground or to have a someone feel like they're not welcomed in a friend group. Thank you because I'm sorry that this happened. I can't imagine how stressful this has been as a family member. So thank you because I'm sorry. And then the last part, this one, guys, is how you turn your families where they feel like they're against you on your team. And it's magical. Let's work together. It's awesome. Let's work together. So let's go back to that scenario. Remember, it's thank you because I'm sorry. Let's work together. So thank you for bringing it to my attention that that situation happened because the last thing I would want is your child to feel like they didn't have a strong friend group on their playground. I'm sorry that this happened. I can't imagine how stressful and hard this has been as a family or a parent. Let's work together and come up with ideas on how we can make sure to fix this next time when it happens in the moment. You guys, it works. Trust me, if you are worried about talking to your families or that something might get out of hand, always say thank you because I'm sorry. Let's work together. It's magic, guys. Trust me. Use it. And DM me after because I want to hear about how it worked for you because it worked for me. In fact, little fun story. I had a family member upset in the office and they were upset at another adult. And little me, as in 21-year-old me, went up to this family and defused the whole situation. Now, I'm not saying that they were a teacher. They might have been admin. But I was, it helped and, you know, the person wasn't expecting it. So jumping in and being able to help like that and defuse the whole situation, they were so thankful and glad that I did it, that they had me share with other adults and we'll just leave it at that. So it works and I hope that helps. Um, So those are all my tips for parent teacher conferences. If you have any questions, feel free to, to send me a DM. I like to hang out on my live Q&As for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. So as always, remember, we're stronger together. Oh, no, 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 no. There's one more thing I got to share with you. I'm glad I wrote it down. I almost forgot. I have been busy working on a couple of things behind the scenes, but one of them is I have a Harry Potter classroom. As you know, I'm a Harry Potter fan slash nerd, and I created a quiz which is which Harry Potter character are you teacher edition. It's awesome. I love this quiz and not gonna lie, I wanted to take it myself several times, even though I know how to get from point A to point B, just so I can get Hermione, you guys. But anyways, I will let you know in my stories when I will be dropping this quiz because I wanna hear what your results are. I might take it just so we can see what my results are and see if we're the same. Anyway, so make sure to 
keep checking my stories because I will let you guys know the as soon as it comes out. So keep on the lookout for that. And if you're watching the replay, I will let you know in the comments when it's done and ready to go. And I'll put the link in my story. So, and in my bio. Anyways, going back to what I was saying, as always, remember we're stronger together. You are killing it. Teacher Bessie, you are doing awesome. I am so proud of you. Keep it up. We are getting there. Can you believe we only have four or five months left in the year? I can't. Anyways, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. If you need me, you know I'm always here for you. Anyways, Stronger Together, I will talk to you soon. Bye, Teacher Bestie. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I hope that you were able to take away some value that will help you thrive inside and out of the classroom. It would mean the world to me if you could take five seconds right now and leave a review on this podcast. And if you found this podcast especially helpful, make sure to take a screenshot of this episode right now and tag me on your socials to let me know you're listening. As always, remember that we are stronger together with all the love in the world, Helena, aka the President teacher. See you next time, teacher bestie.